Greetings, everyone who decided to click on this video. Thank you for that. So, I'm going to talk here about one of my favorite games called Undertale. There will be three topics. First, simply some of my thoughts about the game itself. Second, about the community of Undertale. And third, the most important for me to talk about is gonna be a little story of my introduction to Undertale and how this game affected and changed my life. And why should you be interested in all my thoughts, opinions and stories? Well, no reason. Mainly I am doing this video for myself to free my head from this annoying idea that I've been having for several years now. Um, if all that sounds for you like a worthy things to waste your time on, well, here I go. Hope you will enjoy. It's kinda crazy to think that Undertale came out in 2015 a whole seven years ago. Little indie game that became incredibly popular in the gaming community. And I think, rightfully so, world, atmosphere, characters, story, dialogues, humor, breaking through the fourth wall, effects of your actions on the game, music. Oh my god, the Undertale soundtrack is amazing! All these features were incredible, and they could capture your heart and touch your soul. Holy shit. That was so fucking good. If you would reduce your skepticism and try to honestly enjoy the game. And what I mean by that? Well, I think that for some people, skepticism may come from the first impressions of such things like pixel art. It might not look good. Definitely could be more interesting. Combat also doesn't look so exciting. You simply move your red heart inside of a square and act or strike. A lot of simple and random dialogues with NPCs which can annoy someone. And of course, in reality, Undertale is much deeper and bigger. I just think that all those negative little things is what you might imagine when you see Undertale's trailer or little bit of gameplay for the first time. And then maybe you also may find out that some people call this game the best game ever. You may find it hard to believe and become incredulous, which affects your perception of the game if you decide to give it a try, after all. I think that what might have happened to some people who say that Undertale is bad and overhyped. But of course, all that didn't really affect the game's popularity. Most people liked Undertale. It even made its way in Smash Bros. Ultimate. Only the skin though, but whatever. I am very happy that things went this way, that Undertale found so many positive reviews. And I am grateful to Toby Fox and his team for creating such an amazing game. But that's enough about good stuff. Let's talk about our second topic. Undertale's fandom. I think Undertale's fandom has been one of the worst across the internet for a very long time. And I'm saying that after being an active part of it after like three or four years. Even Jacksepticeye who enjoyed Undertale awesome! a lot and even put it in his top 9 list. Said this on his old Christmas live stream. The cringiest fandom. No, Undertale was last year. <laughs> was it? Well, it's still, it, it was so hard that it went over. 
There we go. That I mean, game is amazing, but good God, that community. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could say that 2016 Undertale got that because it started out good, Yeah, 2015 and then, Undertale was then good. Then spilling uh, over. I'm going to get in so much trouble if you're saying Undertale now. And I love Undertale. I love Undertale too. Yeah, I know. I've always said yeah. I love Undertale, there are loads but of YouTube the fan base is over, though. No, he told me in private that he was going to say that. This damn crime kids problem. There was so much toxicity about your game is great. Your play been wrong. How dare you not worship sounds, noise, music, literally any other thing about game. And don't do genocide. But at the same time, you have to do pacifist. And then you have to do genocide. And then you have to do post-genocide pacifist. And then post-pacifist genocide. Because when there are so much things that change, like this photo or these two new sentences in the dialogue, you have to see it. People were very loud if any little thing about your views of Undertale didn't match theirs. And they were ready to tell you a lot of shit. There would be streamers who'd get actual death threats just because they had killed Toriel in their playthroughs. Opinions about the bad state of this fandom were often voiced across the internet. And I've even seen some cases where people were biased towards Undertale because of these negative feedbacks. Maybe after so many years things have changed, but I'm not an active part of this fandom anymore, so I simply do not know. And then the alternative universes incident happened. It's kinda wild how many different concepts were created and how much content we received from them. I'm not saying that everything was bad, of course not. A lot of these stuffs were enjoyable, but there were occasions of ice hurting arts and fanfics. And to be fair, if I'm being negative towards any of these AU stuff, it's not because it was such a big of a deal for fandom's reputation, no. It just was annoying for me personally, sometimes. Like, I found it especially cringe that some AUs were created simply just for the sake of everyone so beloved sons. Oh my god! Oh! I lost! With new scars, I view this, tattoos, clothes, edgy and cool personalities, also known as the lack of it. Especially error in ink sons. I fucking hate them. <laughs> but of course, there is a good side of this community, and it's huge. People have been creating an incredible amount of amazing content, and surprisingly, there is a lot of stuff about all of the side characters, not just the main and famous ones. In the past, I was again and again watching animations and arts, listening to remixes and covers reading a lot of comics and all of that for countless hours. One million versions of Sans vs. Frisk and I'm stronger than you, am I right? Let's go! I've even read some fanfics. Powerful, Unfinished Tale, Under Doom. They were pretty interesting and well written. I still remember some great artists like Monster Kennedy. He is an OP smurf with his disgustingly gorgeous drawings of locations, mechanisms, and other stuff. This has been my phone wallpaper for like 6 years now. Kuvacha, a music video called Photograph, is forever going to be my favorite Undertale animation ever. Fleur Marigold, to whom I am thankful for this video with correct take about Chara. DC 96. Cute style and very good comics. Bunny Chan. Senor Pelo. Richard E. B. Chara X. Say Maxwell. Lenich and Kirya. Smooth Magru. Try Hard Ninja Is 
And so on. So yeah, I'm amazed that this little indie game has inspired such a huge amount of skilled artists to spend their time on making so many ridiculously great works and seven years later people are still creating more and more art. Even I did something. If you google Caster Blaster 3D, you can find my little model that I made in Splinters. Even though it was just a replica of this model, I've spent 14 hours making it and I like the result. So I want to say thank you to all amazing creators. The works always bring me a lot of joy and entertainment. And finally, it is time for me to tell you how much of an impact Undertale has had on my life and changed it for the better. How I got there where I am now. It all started when one YouTuber named Shoes220, who I was watching at the time, uploaded his playthrough of Neutral Run. <laughs> And then he stopped and never uploaded the rest of the game. I was hooked. It was really fun to watch and I wanted to experience the rest of the Undertale for myself. Obviously, I already spoiled a pretty big part of the game, but thanks to shoes, not everything. I bought it on Steam, waited for the translation from the fans to come out and then I entered this world. I finished this game five times. One neutral, two pacifists, one genocide runs. It took me 23 attempts to beat Sans mm, for the first time. On the second time, I did it in one go. <laughs> but still, three attempts for the undying the undying. While playing, I experienced a lot of emotions of all kinds. I consumed everything this game had to offer and still wanted more. This big world, wonderful characters, amazing music, great story. I was addicted to all that. Of course, there just was no such option that after I exit Undertale for the last time, all of these things would simply disappear my life. So I started to consume all kinds of content from different websites, seeing drawings of my beloved characters after those in-game pixel arts. It was it was really magical, especially with Undyne. People can draw her so good. God damn she's nice. I want to see other people's positive reactions and emotions, so I have watched like 13 playthroughs of Undertale. Some of them just for the specific, special, sad or funny moments. Like there was one guy who killed Toriel and then he felt bad, so he loaded his save file and managed to spare her. And he got this special dialogue with Flowey who tells him that he knows about the player's power of save and load the world. Oh man, his reaction was so good, but sadly I, I can't find him anymore, even though I tried hard. And also this guy, Glocko, this video of him getting emotional during this last fight with Azriel. it's so good. <laughs> I watched it a lot of times. This is so weird, this is the first time a video game did this to me. But some people I've watched all the way. Etika. What? Sean. Yo, God! What are you doing? The, the hell? PewDiePie. Yep. My ass!
Cryotic. That dog's a bomb. Oh, it is a bomb. He's clear through. I watched twice. Holy, this guy is good. And then, during this whole era, I found a group of people who translated Undertale comics. I became active in comment section. Then I participated in a translation contest. Tried to use Photoshop for the first time in my life. I didn't win, but liked the process. I continued to translate and submit my works to them. Some time later, they took me in. Those were good times. We had a lot of fun and drama. I found some friends, enemies. We gave a lot of meaning to things that now I find so unimportant and little. I think I was quite good in my cleaning and typing skills. My grammar was also on point. Eventually, I even became one of the leaders of our cult. And we didn't make any money from this, so don't you worry for all these vulnerable and poor artists whose work we dare to translate. The longest I've been working on this comic, as I called it, Bra Tale. Author uploaded very dirty pages, sometimes with bad resolution. So I've been spending a lot of time cleaning the pages, trying to look them nice and all. This cover page took me four hours to clean. But my biggest achievement is this hentai manga called Ula Boros. Me and my friend Alex bought this manga, asked one of the members of a group to translate it, and then we made the one and only digital version of it. Bog. Later I saw that the author is selling the second part of this manga, but sadly I have already dropped my hobby. Just like a lot of artists have dropped their comics. And during all these events, one day a new potential member was introduced to us. A girl named Yama. She passed our test and began to make some high quality translations. We started to discuss some comics, help each other, check for mistakes. She lived in another city two days by train from me. Then we started to talk about anime, novels, Undertale, personal lives, and a lot of other stuff. We talked a lot. She was very interesting to fool. We had a lot in common and eventually I started to like her. One day I decided, as soon as I graduate from my university, I will move to her place and tell her about my feelings. But later she managed to visit my town for a short time and at the end of our first meeting day I simply confessed to her that I want her to become my girlfriend. Long story short, she agreed. We started to visit each other sometimes. Then I got my diploma and now we have been living together well for like two and a half years. And sometimes we wonder that all that wouldn't happen if not for one little indie game called Undertale and lucky crossing of our life paths in its fandom. Thank you, Kabir Pops, for Undertale. Without you, so many beautiful creations wouldn't exist. People wouldn't draw all these comics that I translated, and I would never have managed to meet my love. That's all. Thank you for listening. Whew. Ow. <laughs> I finally got out of my system and can fall asleep faster. Well, goodbye.